Hey guys, Will Terry here, and I got a kind of a shorter one for you today. Uh, we're going to find out if it's worth it to upload a children's book to Amazon um, for the Kindle program. So we're going to we're going to look at both the the physical book and the Kindle version. But before we get going, what is my expertise? Well, let me tell you. I taught illustration and children's book illustration for nine years at UVU. I have illustrated over 30 children's books for publishers like Penguin Random House and Scholastic. I'm a co-host on the wildly popular Three Point Perspective podcast. I'm a co-owner at svslearn.com, which is a self-paced online children's book illustration, comic book illustration learning platform. My current love project is this children's book, Pickleball Paul, and you can find out more at pickleball-paul.com. Okay, so let's look at uh, some reports here. And so this is this is the first book that I put on Kindle. Just to show those of you who may not be following my, my video series on how I'm going to make $50,000 on this book right here, which is Pickleball Paul. Um, this is the Kindle version, and it's a soft cover, okay? And then I've got these hard covers, and that's what's behind me. My wife actually talked me into drawing little pictures on these boxes. Um, next week, I will be out of town, but I will make an update video the following week, and that will be the week that I show my updated sales numbers. I share all that information, how I'm marketing the book in this series. Um, I believe this is video number 25 in this series, and let's get into the numbers. So we're going to look at uh, reports here. This book has been on Amazon for four months. So back in January of 2023, uh, I uploaded this, and we're just kind of looking at orders here. Um, let's look at lifetime orders. And we can see that we have 340 sales. If I look at this, this this number right here kind of tell, is telling the picture on whether it's worth it or not. Now, um, that's 11 Kindle books sold, and uh, print is going to be 329. Now let's look at let's look at the royalties on that because that gives us a little bit more of an in-depth picture. I'm going to hit lifetime as well. Again, the last four months. And we can see that the sales of ebooks for this Pickleball Paul has been $27. The royalties for the um, the lending library program, $3.18. I think we can call that one not worth it in four months worth. Um, print sales, um, $1,300 worth. But let's do some math really quick here because uh, I thought this might be interesting to just kind of look at a little bit here. So... Let's see, where should I put this? We'll put it right there. So if we take uh, 27, let's just round it to $27, right? And we divide that by four months, roughly. We're going to get $6.75. And, and, 75 cents. and um, if we divide that uh, uh, into, oh, by the way, it cost me, my designer charged me uh, $750 to make the Kindle version. Now, I'm sure you can do better than that. I'm sure you can do it cheaper. I'm sure a lot of you guys can do it on your own. This is me. I have so many things going on in my life that outsourcing that nightmare of getting it right, and it, we went through some nightmares getting the formatting right. Um, and admittedly, my designer, that's not her forte. It's not something that she has ever done before. So some of you might say, well, you're way overpaying, and, you, and you're probably right. But for her, you know, I wanted her to charge what it was going to cost her in time in learning how to do this, and it was $750. So if we take um, $750 and we divide it by that $625, $675, we are going to get 111 months divided by 12 for a year. So for me to break even of what she's charging me, it's going to cost me, it's going to take nine years at the rate that I'm going right now. Now, I'm sure that that would go up as I, um, as we are doing Facebook marketing for the hard, hardback books. Again, if you've been following my channel, you know that I have not been doing any marketing of these Amazon books at all. What What's happening, the reason why I'm selling at all on Amazon is because I push the hardcovers through my social media, through Facebook ads, through the salesman that I'm working with when he goes to pickleball tournaments and sells there. 
And what happens is people jump on their phone and they jump on Amazon and they see if they can get it cheaper. And, and it is, it's, you know, I'm, I'm retailing the, the hardcover for $25 and my Amazon book is um, $13. So you can see right there, um, you know, that um, it, it's a lot cheaper and a lot of people are going to be incentivized to go for that soft cover. I'm sure that a lot of people are going to get that soft cover and not know, not really read and think it's the exact same thing. Then when they get it home, some of them might be disappointed. I'm not sure about that. I haven't heard anything about that yet. I think some people are just interested in saving a buck and that's a good way to do it. I did want to also, I, I, I guess what I'm saying in this video is that for me and my, in my method, I will not be paying to have a Kindle version uh, made for this book anymore. I am going to just make a PDF, which is going to cost me nothing. Um, and I'll sell that on my, my website. And if anybody wants to download the PDF, I'll, I'll charge a decent amount for it. I haven't really thought that through yet, but I'll just, I'm going to pull this book from um, the lending library. I think I have to give them three months notice. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in pretty soon here. And then, um, and then that once those three months are up, They'll send me a letter saying, okay, it's now yours again, and I can I can go ahead and sell it on my site. If I were to do that now, I'd be in breach of contract. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do anything to jeopardize my uh, relationship with Amazon because the print sales are doing great for me. I mean, uh, 300 and what was it? Um, let's look at the lifetime. Um, 340 books. Um uh, or sorry, 329 books, 11 of those uh, are Kindle units, so 329 books in four months without doing any marketing on Amazon is just it's just extra gravy, and I, and I love it. I did want to look at the numbers, just to give you a comparison, if you're thinking about doing something like this on your own, when I sell a book through, um, so, so let's go back to these, let's actually um, go back to these numbers again in the royalties. Um, when I sell a book on from like um, HarperCollins or Penguin Random House, I get about 75 cents a book. Okay, so so for me, when I sell a book at 75 cents, let's do that. Let's do 0.75 times 329 books. Uh, I make about 240 dollars, 246 dollars. Um, is going to come to me in a royalty check, but let I me mean, check it out. I on Amazon here, they're giving me four dollars and fifteen cents a book times three hundred twenty-nine, and I'm getting thirteen sixty-five. So quite a bit of difference there um, in the amount of money that I'm getting, and you can see that you know you could you could. Uh, if you if you have a way of actually getting books out to people or getting the message out in in different groups and stuff um, in, in the niche that you want to make a book in, you you have to sell a fifth of the number of books to make the same amount of money that you would with a publisher. There's actually a lot of benefit um, to kind of working this way um, now, and and that's and I'm saying that without even going and and printing you know a whole bunch of physical books on your own. Again, you can order your books from Amazon. Uh, my books cost me. It's interesting that it's like thirteen sixty five, but that's my books cost me three dollars and sixty five cents per book if I were to order these soft covers from Amazon through the Artist Portal, um, and so that's that's not bad. I'm selling them for thirteen dollars. You could order them for thirteen sixty five each, um, and you could avoid actually going to China like I did and printing. The reason that I want to do that is the upside is so much higher um, on the cost of these, which are um, anywhere around $2.50 to $3 for one of these hardbacks um, at, the, at the bulk number that I ordered, which was 5,000. So you can see, you can do the math there, 5,000 books. Um, if I sold at 5,000 books, if I only sold 1,000 of those books, 1,000 books at that $25 retail, is twenty five thousand dollars, right? So you can break even selling a fifth of of this quantity of books. Um, pretty cool. Um, so that's basically what I have for you this week. Next week I'll be out of town. 
just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, I had two more uh, paddle shops contact me and want to order wholesale. So we're putting together wholesale orders for um, a paddle shop in California and another one in, I believe, in Florida. And then um, there was one question on the channel that I saw. And if, and if I've missed your questions, I apologize. And so this question was um, from a viewer who said... Uh, how can how can we as illustrators separate ourselves or compete when there's sites like Fiverr out there, okay, um, as illustrators? And that's a pretty big question. I mean, it's I could answer I could answer it really simply, or I could spend a lot of time answering it. Um, it really depends on what you want to do, okay. And here's the thing: for most of the people that are going to be on Fiverr, they're going to be the 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 lower quality artists, okay? It's just the, the lower quality artists are going to mostly be there. They're going to be there from, from countries. They're going to be competing from countries where um, the dollar is, is actually stronger. So they th if they get paid in dollars, they don't need as many dollars as someone living in, let's say, Canada or the U.S. or even in Europe or something like that. And so they're always going to underbid and they're always going to basically beat you um, when, as far as like the the value they're getting, or what they can spend that money on that they get in their country versus what it'll actually buy in your country. You know, um, so so competing on price is is really tough for artists because everybody has a different style, and everybody's style takes a different amount of time, and so the the problem with with trying to compete with a site like Fiverr or, you know, like using that as a service is you're probably always going to get undercut and people that the clients that are going to go to Fiverr, they're not going to value the higher end illustrators anyway. They're going to, they're, they're basically going there because they want to pay virtually nothing to get as much as they possibly can. So you really can't compete there. Um, in one of the best ways that you can compete is one, doing a style that it, it takes takes so much more time and effort and it's got so much more polish that someone on Fiverr just can't really do that style. Now, some people are going to say, well, with AI art, they probably can and they probably will. And my answer has always been, well, do your own projects, you know, do make something on your own and sell it on your own and, and, hire yourself, you know, be your own employer. Don't, don't wait to be picked by a company who is, you know, companies that are, that have access now to AI art and have access to people that are using AI art. Um, and, uh, that is going to be a problem for the freelancer. It definitely will be. Um, the AI is just going to make that competition harder and harder over time. Um, and, the, the way out that I see right now is um, you're an artist. Be like writers. Be like musicians. Be like um, be like co comedians. Be like the artists that that make things and sell things directly to their audience. Comedians they write jokes. They go and they they sell basically they sell those jokes by by getting up on stage right and trying to compete and it's really really difficult in the beginning and they have to do a lot of work where it's really hard to pay the bills in the beginning but if they really believe in themselves uh and work their craft up then some of them can make a really good living um down the road um some of them get into become uh, actors that way you know it's a it's a road into acting uh writers they sit down and they write a story. They start with a blank piece of paper. They write a story and then they sell that story. They either sell the story to a publisher or they self-publish and put it out there on their own. Um, but people don't hire writers as much in children's books. Speaking of children's books, they don't get hired to write a story. They write the story first. Musicians, they write songs. Now, there, are, there's two different ways of looking at it. There's, there's the performing musicians that get that are looking for gigs where they get hired to just be, um, you know, backup for a singer or something like that. So they're selling their talent that way. And that would be a lot more like 
what illustrators are doing when, when we want to get hired freelance. The freelance is drying up. It's drying up for a lot of reasons. It's drying up because people in other in in countries where they don't need as much money, like I said, can compete on on price. It's drying up because um, there's a lot of shakeup in the industry right now. Um, it's drying up because of AI art. It's drying up from from for a lot of reasons. There's more artists than ever before trying to compete for the same amount of jobs. Um, but one thing that you can do is you can pick yourself and start writing your own stories. And my plan for this series is to take this as far as I can. I have five books planned right now. I hope I get to do 10 books. I hope I get to do 15 because the more that I work on this project and the more books that I upload, and you can see right here, right now, I've just got this one book right here, Pickleball Paul, right? But when I get two, the second one will appear down here. And guess what? Each one of them is going to point to the others. And I can put them in a series on here on Amazon. Um, and on my website, I can obviously I'll have the series showing there. And whenever I do any marketing for any one of those books, the my my uh, readership, my my um, my customers will be able to see. Oh, there's this isn't just a one off. This isn't just one book. This is um, this is a part of a series. Well, my kid loves this book. Maybe we should go back and buy more of them. And it's just easier to work on a series like this. So th this is th this is really what I think you should be doing is working towards getting yourself prepared to where you can actually make a series of whatever it is, uh, games, um, puzzles, um, comics, children's books, whatever it is, um, make a series and each one makes it easier to market the next one, right? And then as you grow your, your, um, as you grow your, your customer base and your email list, when the new one is released, you get to email to those, those people that bought the previous one and so on and so forth. And over time, it should grow wide. And that's why I say I'm going to make $50,000 on this children's book. Because I do believe that over time, I will be able to make, to profit $50,000. Follow me on this journey. This is a get rich slow scheme. Um, it's definitely a scheme. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. And quite frankly, like I've, I've mentioned on other videos before, um, there for, for multiple reasons, I am not right for the uh, mass market publishing industry anymore. I think they have definitely cut me loose because I have the wrong skin color, the wrong gender, and my politics are all wrong. And so they're not interested in working with me anymore. Honest. And if you guys feel like, <laughs> that's funny, Sirius is looking for, looking for something right now. Um, if you guys are in the same boat, feel like you might be in the same boat, this might be the route for you to go. Um, I actually think that I will make a lot more money doing this than working with a publisher. Um, and it's just the, it's just the way that times are right now. They're, they're very different than they were even just three or five years ago. Um, things are, are crazy different. I could tell you stories. I've had to make some promises that I won't reveal certain things in the publishing industry, things that have been told to me, um, behind the scenes, um, under the table, not under the table, off the record, uh, that I wish I could divulge, but I know what I'm talking about here. And, um, and so now is the time for me to, to kind of go off on my own and do my own thing. And the tools have never been better. The opportunity has never been better than right now in this period of time. Um, Amazon KDP launched in 2016. Prior to that, it didn't exist. Um, the ability to, um, the, the, the ability to create a website using a tool like Shopify, which is where my website is, by the way, I have links to everything below, um, the pickleball-paul.com link below. Um, and it, the tools that, that we are using today for email, for creating, you know, for shipping, um, buying shipping products, those things have sprung up for e-commerce. It's, it's, it's the best time to, in the world to be doing something like this. The opportunity is there for someone to just work out of their house. Again, we only have to sell a small fraction of the books that a big publisher needs to sell. They're leaving a huge gap in the market, I believe. I believe they're only uh, satisfying half of the customer base. I believe that there's half of the customer base that are frustrated 
at a lot of the, the offerings that they're putting out right now. And that's actually good for people like me, where there's an opportunity now that there wasn't before, um, an opportunity to do the type of books that have really wholesome ha- family values. That's what I'm interested in. That's what I'm going to be doing. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, follow my channel. I don't often beg for likes, but it's funny that uh, I've been told by a Google rep that if I want to increase my channel and get my reach out there, I've got to ask you guys to like the videos. So like, share, and subscribe. Do all those good things, right? Um, If you liked what you saw, and I will see you on the next one.